Okay, so what we have here is a Doppler effect cal calculator. What this allows you to do is calculate the Doppler shift um, for the perceived frequency um, for any two-dimensional situation uh, where a car or an object that's producing a single frequency is moving perpendicular to an observer. So you can see here, here's our object. Uh, the car moving at some speed VO, the speed of the object and it's moving in a perpendicular fashion along this road compared to an observer down here. So this could be like a T intersection or something like that. As we know, as it's approaching, the waves are going to be bunched up in front, which is reducing the wavelength, increasing the frequency uh, due to the speed of sound remaining constant. Um, when it reaches this point here, it's starting to move away, and we know that the waves will be further uh, spread out uh, with a larger wavelength, which reduces the frequency, again, because the speed of sound is constant. Um, we're going to look at a couple cases, uh, those being uh, when the observer is standing right in the way of the car and imagine that the car is moving right towards it. That's the standard Doppler effect thing that we do in uh, grade 11 physics. Uh, so students are always looking at that where the, uh, the car is coming towards you, an object is coming towards you, and you measure one perceived frequency, and then when it passes you, you perceive a lower frequency. Um, and at the point when it reaches you, it should drop and switch immediately um, as the car hits you. Um, at that point, you would hear the actual frequency of the object. Um, but again, that would be instantaneous, um, and you should see a break in the curve uh, in the graph that we get for this. So what I've done here is uh, rewritten the equation based on the fact that as the car is moving across um, our path, the angle at which it makes to you is given by the distance d. Um, x is the p initial position of the car in the in the direction here, and then you subtract um, its position, which is v naught t. So v naught t is the distance it is that's left basically. So whatever its initial position is, minus v naught t will tell you um, where the car is in its travel along here. For instance, when you get to this point here, v naught t equals x, and therefore it's zero. Um, and, the, and then basically we end up with a situation uh, where the angle we get is 90 degrees and in fact at this point uh, this whole term drops to zero uh, and we get Vs over Vs uh, and therefore F2 should equal F1 and then as it passes um, V naught T becomes uh, basically negative in this case um, as time goes on and the position that we measure will become negative uh, and then it will switch. So everything should work out. Now, um, we're also going to look at the case when D is really, 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 really far away. Because when D is really, really, really far away, the angle it makes is almost 90 and this whole term uh, becomes zero and we end up with Vs over Vs and F1 should equal F2. So we're going to look at all those cases and see if that's true. So let's look at the, the first case, and we're even going to graph these uh, as a function of time. So what we're going to look at here is some objects moving at 10 meters per second. Um, we're initially, let's say, 10 meters away from the road, and 10 meters, uh, the object is level 20 meters down the road. The speed of sound, let's pick 340 meters per second, and we'll assume that the frequency is 1000 hertz. And you can see also we've got the code here. Um, that's running the PHP code that's running this and we'll run the calculation. So the calculation runs and we can see that when it's at 20 meters it's 1027, uh, when it's at 19.9 .9 meters, so I just did 0 0.01 time steps, uh, we can see it we're at this and then we keep going and eventually this, the distance will equal zero. So the object will be around this point right here and you can see that the perceived frequency is in fact 1000. Now, uh, and then it will proceed to get lower and lower and lower as it proceeds away. So we can download the results, and then we can open these results. And here are our results. And we can just go insert scatter plot. Graph. Uh, I don't know why it says that. Every once in a while I get this error where it says it can't do it. So there we go. So that's what this would look like um, over time. So here's the time. So it took four seconds. 
Uh, it started at 127, and then you see it dropped down to the 1000. That's when it was at its that point across. And then that's when it was, so it was decreasing. So it was a high frequency, then the frequency got lower and lower and lower and lower until it got to the same frequency of 1000. And then it got lower uh, progressively, as you can see right here. So now let's look at the case when, um, when what's happening is, well, it won't save, okay. And now we'll look at the case when we're at zero. So we'll keep the same speed of 10. The distance now is zero. We'll start it at 20 as well. Keep the same of 340 and still 1000 hertz. And we'll run the calculation. And now you can see that it doesn't change. And eventually, as we approach zero distance, when it hits us basically, um, which is right there, we'll see that it switches from 1030 to 971. So basically right in between there, we would have been right at 1000. And then it maintains a constant lower frequency. So that's the case right here from this equation where we're sitting right here. And this is the standard calculation that we see. This is the normal F2 equals F1 Vs over Vs plus or minus V0 without all this extra stuff accounting for the angle at which it's at. Download these results, open, Look at our data, insert, and there we go. So as we expected, 1030 is the normal calculation, that's the Doppler shift. Oh sorry, that's a Doppler shift of 30 because 100 was the actual frequency. So that's a 30 shift above, and then basically you would hear 1000 as it passes through you or kills you, at this, as it would be because it would go right past you or you're standing really close to it. And then drops to 970, so it's a Doppler shift of 30 as well, which you would expect. Okay, now we'll do the case where we are really, 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 really far away. If we're really, 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 really far away, basically this just looks like this car could be moving as fast as it wants over any distance, and we would never even notice it's moving if it's really far enough away. It's like looking at a star um, really far away that, you know, it doesn't look like it's moving to us, but over time it clearly is moving and very, very fast and very, very far. But because we're so astronomically far from it, we don't notice any change, which means that the perceived frequency we see should be very close to the actual emitted frequency, um, which is very interesting. As a result, you know, if we look at galaxies and stars from far, far away as well. So again, we'll pick 10 meters per second, um, but now we're going to pick, I don't know, some just ridiculously far distance uh, away in meters. Um, we'll start it at 20 as well. We'll make the speed of sound 340, and we'll start at 1000 hertz. And if this is all good, it should be 1000 the whole time. I won't bother graphing this one uh, because clearly you'll see that it's just always going to be a thousand or very very close to but you can see it's not exactly a thousand and that's the cool thing about this is that you know we could keep making these higher and higher and higher um, and you would see it we get closer and closer to a thousand but clearly would never truly be 1000 because that object would always still be moving a bit so even when we look at stars from really really far away no matter how far away it is it's still moving which means that we are still going to observe a Doppler shift if it's moving perpendicular to us. Of course, moving towards us or away from us, we're going to notice as well, but um, it's very important. And this is obviously important if we're looking at age, uh, figuring out the age of the universe and things like that. So anyways, um, you can check out the, the code here. This is just the PHP code. This doesn't actually um, show you the HTML for this, uh, but clearly you're going to have to have um, the submit button form so you can actually just view the source code of this page um, and drop this PHP code um, into the middle of it and it should all work.